copies are in listen-only mode. Welcome to our webinar today. This is Bill Baker with Firestorm, and we're pleased to have you joining us for this crisis conversation. This is the sixth in the 2016 series of the Crisis Coach webinar series, and this is presented in conjunction with our good friends at the College of Continuing Studies at the University of Alabama. We'd like to have you as our friend on Facebook. Oh, there we go. Uh, we're known as Firestorm Solutions on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Firestorm Soul. There is a hashtag. That hashtag is Crisis Coach. Firestorm transforms crisis into value and empowers you to manage risks and crises. Firestorm expertise is crisis management, critical decision support, crisis communications, crisis public relations, and consequence management. We do want to remind you our presentation today is not complete without the accompanying oral comments and discussion. And this book product should be read in conjunction with advice from your organization's personal counsel. Do not interpret this information or the comments given as legal advice or legal opinion. Firestorm is very pleased to have an ongoing and long-term relationship with our very good friends at the College of Continuing Studies at the University of Alabama. You can go to firestorm.com, you can watch past webinars in this series, and you can register for future webinars. Today, Jim Satterfield will be the presenter in this crisis conversation. We're also joined by Brenda Truelove. She's the program manager of the College of Continuing Studies in Tuscaloosa. Brenda, over to you, please. Good morning, and welcome to uh, a virtual view of the University of Alabama this morning. It's going to be quite a scorcher here today, and we really appreciate everybody uh, taking time to listen to our webinar today and to learn more about our topic, which crisis conversation includes being prepared ahead of time for what you're going to say in a crisis. So we are very pleased to have an ongoing relationship with Firestorm, and they've just been a great partner with us working on different topics and helping us expand and to get our word out about the connection between crisis communication and people in the everyday workplace. So we have a webinar series today that highlights our professionally speaking workshop that's coming up August the 19th here on the campus of the University of Alabama. And it speaks to the question, are, are you prepared in a crisis? Do you and your team have a plan for what you're going to do and more importantly, what you're going to say in the event of a crisis? So we're inviting business executive professionals and those on the management team to participate in our workshop. We hosted this workshop last uh, winter and had a tremendous response. Uh, so we decided to go with it again. Uh, at the workshop, you'll learn how to craft your messages. Uh, you'll learn how to use your visual aids effectively. And really, a lot of the to uh, topics relates around overcoming public speaking anxiety, uh, verbal and nonverbal communication, and crafting your crisis communication message ahead of the crisis situation. Um, our two wonderful speakers are both uh, professors here at the University of Alabama, Dr. Alexis Chilcutt, uh, is currently director of the public speaking program at the university, and her uh, uh, assistant, Dr. Adam Brooks. Uh, Adam is a nationally renowned public speaker, uh, and he's just a joy, uh, as well as Alexa is a joy to listen to and learn from. And we're really hoping that uh, everyone will sign up for our workshop August 19th here at the Bryant Conference Center, named for Coach Paul Bear Bryant. The registration numbers are showing on the screen, and our website, uh, www.training.ua.edu, forward slash professionally speaking. Or you may contact me, truelove, at ccs.ua.edu. So we're really looking forward to that, and looking forward to Jim giving us some additional information about crisis conversation today. Thank you, Jim, for your great partnership with uh, Firestorm. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Brenda, and the University of Alabama, and the uh, good work that you do in getting information out. 
I think the uh, course that you've got set out, and particularly the speakers on the 19th of August, will provide a unique opportunity to get your questions asked and answered to be able to help at every step along the way. Uh, today's webinar, we had set up at the beginning of the year to take a, kind of a mid-year look at where we are with the crises that we're handling. Um, as you know, Firestorm is America's crisis coach, and we get calls uh, every day with someone who's experiencing a problem. And uh, across the bottom there, you'll see sexual molestation, violence, racism, compliance. Um, uh, I drew a line through those, although we've had those happen this year multiple times in a variety of different settings to deal with, uh, to help respond. That's not your organization's next crisis. More than likely, it's going to be your response to the crisis that's just occurred. Um, a crisis isn't business as usual, it's business as unusual. And I thought we ought to stop for a few minutes and talk about what happens in that crisis and what you need to think about early in it as you shape your plans. Uh, we've got a lot of people from across the country. Uh, some of you got up early in California to be here today and uh, so we're glad to have you all with us as we uh, talk about what you can think about in terms of a crisis. So where are we? Uh, when you think about today's world, how much time do you have to respond to a crisis? And the answer is none. Uh, with smartphones and devices, there are text messages going out, there's video going up on uh, YouTube, that information is, is flowing. Uh, years ago, we used to talk about in a crisis the golden hour. You'd have an hour to talk to your law firm, to deal with your insurance company, maybe your PR firm, uh, get your board members on board and put your strategy in place. Now it's happening and everybody needs to know before now what's, what's going to be done and what's going to be said and you're going to be under tremendous pressure internally within your organization saying we got to get out there and frame this issue. We've got to get our version of the facts out. And we're going to talk about that today and hopefully give you some insights uh, to think about in going through that particular process. I would also remind you, as we've talked about in multiple of our webinars, that it's more than a Google search. You need to have an intelligence network that tells you what's being said. Today, the media uses social media to drive their broadcast news. And so what's being said there will make a difference about it. Now, uh, we've obviously gone over the last several weeks with a, a lot of stories about Muhammad Ali and the images that come to mind when we think about him, you know, being the greatest and all those others. And this quote of Muhammad Ali, I had not seen until um, all the uh, celebration of his life had come. And silence is golden when you can't think of a good answer. And I would tell you that advice from Muhammad Ali is 100% true in a crisis. Trying to sit here and talk in a crisis is going to be a mistake. And when we think about it, there's a right way and a wrong way, and we're going to share some of that with you today. But I think uh, this is a good piece of advice from Muhammad Ali that I had not ever heard until I started seeing some of the quotes coming out from him. So how do you survive an organization? Now, uh, you've done detailed things within your company. You've got standard operating procedures and business plans, and you probably have a business continuity program or continuity of operations program that's there, and you've got quality emphasis in what you're doing. Interestingly, the quality standards have evolved over the last two years to where risk is now included in the ISO standard for quality to think about it. So what happens when things go wrong? The, uh, right at the center, if you're explaining, you're losing. If you find within your organization there's been a crisis and you're trying to explain what happened, well, we did everything right. Well, you probably didn't. Um, but you're trying to get out of the trouble and you're not going to explain your way out. We're going to give you some steps to take so that you can use them based on what we've seen go wrong this year. And, and moving that process forward. So you really need to have a plan. Um, why is the plan needed? Well, every crisis is a human crisis. It's your employees. It's your customers. It's your brand and reputation. And in, when the crisis begins, someone's going to come to you and say, what do we do now? What do we say? 
uh, and how you do that will make a difference. And if you mess it up, once you go down the wrong path, it's going to be very hard to turn that car around and come back. That information is going to work against you. So we need to stop, figure out what we need to do, and then to make the right decisions along the way. And it's our focus here on the impacts, on the consequence. The actual crisis lasts a very short period of time, generally seconds or minutes. But the consequences can last for days and months and weeks and even years. And being defined by those areas becomes extremely uh, likely if, in fact, you don't manage this correctly. So we want to slow this down. And we're going to talk about a process to do that in just a few minutes. But this is what we're focused on. It's better to call this a consequence management plan than it is a crisis management plan because the crisis will be passed. The consequences will linger. So as we think about it, every crisis results in reaction. It could be reaction from your employees, from your shareholders, from the public, from the people that are located near your plan or your school. Those elements can come in. And so what we have to do is to start this just as we would in any continuity planning area. What are the threats? What are, what are we trying to put in place? What's going to be our plan? How will we do this if the things that we're concerned about start to occur? So what we want you to do is to think about STOP. And I'm going to break that down and give you an acronym using that. But when something occurs, no matter what it is, it's going to impact your organization financially, emotionally, and from a reputational standpoint. And so we want to be ready. And so fight the urge to immediately do something. Fight the urge to immediately say something. We want to slow that down. So if you're in the room, if you're a part of this, and many of you today on the call are uh, leaders within your organization associated with your uh, business continuity or some of your other executive programs within the organization, the first thing we want to do is just stop. Stop before we do it and carry that forward. It's important that if you can slow the situation down so that we don't get a knee-jerk reaction, if we don't say the wrong thing immediately, that's really going to be the biggest element that we can take uh, place. We uh, certainly had events that occurred over the last week in Orlando that gave us pause for uh, governments and, and some companies there. Think about those events, and the first thing we want to do is just slow it down before we make a statement and carry it forward. So if we think about stop, it's the process where we slow everything down, control the panic, identify what our immediate concerns are, provide directions, and lay the foundation for consequence management. If you do that correctly, the, the likelihood of transforming this crisis into value accelerates. It puts you in control of the events instead of having someone else take over that control. Now, we've taken the uh, letters of STOP and divided those into four things. Stabilize the situation, trigger the appropriate resources, opine on the exposures, and prevent common crisis errors. There are 10 common crisis errors. We'll later do a, a talk just on that particular area to focus uh, as we look at them. So in stabilize, it's just the fact that you're stopping. Everybody wants to immediately take action. and one of the things we're going to tell you right now is that everything you find out in that crisis initially is wrong. And you're going to be forced to make decisions based upon wrong, incomplete information. And you're going to be forced to make choices between here's a bad choice and there's a bad choice. Which one do you want? My grandfather used to have a, a line, which would you rather have or a whipping? And I, gee, granddad, I think I can figure out I'll take the non-whipping option here if that's okay. But here in a situation in crisis, there are so many things that are going on that you're under tremendous pressure to figure out the right thing. Um, if the shootings in Orlando, had the police gone in sooner, could they have saved lives? If it turned out there had been bombs and explosions, they could have cost lives. But so their Monday morning quarterbacking of events becomes extremely uh, stressed. And remember, a crisis is not business as usual. It's business as unusual. 
So what we want to do is to let the your leadership within your organization didn't get there by not having their act together. But we've got to slow it down to give them a time to process the information and uh, then they'll be in a better position to act instead of just beginning to act on information that's wrong. So first, stabilize. Second, you need to get some resources in there. Uh, if it's your people, you're emotionally involved. There may be counselors that you have to bring in. There may be security professionals that you need to bring in. You need people that can help you uh, deal with how you're communicating uh, in those situations. Get those resources involved and trigger them so that they're there at the point you need. Sometimes those resources can help you virtually. Other times they have to be on site. We certainly have worked in both environments. When someone has a crisis, they immediately think about calling two people. One is their uh, attorney. What's their legal liability associated with this? And they're thinking about those issues. Another would be their insurance agent or broker. What are we covered for? Or do we really have coverage here? And then starting to understand what the impacts are in a variety of areas. So trigger those resources. So that we're first going to stabilize, slow it down. Then we're going to trigger resources. Now then we have to figure out and opine on what could happen next. Uh, this is that two bad option choices. What are we going to happen? You're emotionally involved because it's your people, it's your business, it's your brand, it's your reputation. Those are going to have significant pressures on you. So you want to think about what my overall strategy might be within uh, this portion of it. So you've got to slow it down, stabilize it, get the resources in, figure out what the consequences are, then you're in a position that you can start to take actions. Now that last P stands for prevent, and that means we don't want you to do the wrong thing or say the wrong thing. You can make it significantly worse. Right now, the media will contact you, and after they've had a conversation, then they'll go live with their story, and what they'll say at that point is they spoke with you, and then whatever they say appears as if you had said it when in fact you had not said it. So that's an important element to think about in these areas. If you're explaining, you're losing. And we're going to give you some messages that you can focus on in just a few minutes so that you don't have to say no comment, that you can deliver valid messages. So when you find yourself at a crisis, stop. That's an important element. Firestorm has a program called Crisis Stop. And if you need to talk with us about that, we certainly can help you uh, through that area. So the first thing that you're going to feel in, from everyone is talk. You need to get out there and communicate. we got to get ahead of this issue. We hear this every single time in a crisis. Somebody on the board or some important customer or some uh, person involved with the organization says, well, you need to get that message out and define and frame this issue. Remember now, it's already gone out over that smartphone. It's already out on Twitter. It's out on Facebook. It's out on YouTube. All those other issues are going in. So here's a rule that will help you now that we've gone through the stop on focusing on why you're going to communicate. I want you to ask that question five times. So when someone says, well, we need to communicate, you should say, why? Well, because we've got to tell our employees why, and then have them give you that answer, and then the next, and the next. If you go through that five times, and you can, and you feel comfortable with the answer, then the chances are you really need to communicate. But most of the time, you're going to feel this pressure just to communicate to communicate, and that's the wrong strategy at this point in time. So write down the word why, put the number five behind it, and when that crisis occurs, you talk about why are we going to communicate? So when the crisis first comes up, there are a lot of questions, and, I, and you've got to put a strategy together. And what you see on the screen now is a listing of those things that you want to start putting down. Now here's a big piece of advice, and I would strongly recommend. Take a piece of paper and write down everything you know at each stage along the crisis. Write down who told you. What time did they tell you? Because what did you know and when did you know it will become an important element. And it's the only way that you're able to control it. Now, I know we're in a digital world. And if you want to do this on your computer and open a Word document, that's great. 
I find just a plain piece of paper to give me a chance to get myself organized and to think about it. First thing you're going to want to know is what occurred. Now, you will find out that what actually occurred versus what you were told will change. And I want you to always be careful to focus on what you know, not what you think. And that's an important difference. The second thing, you, after you've got it occurred and what it is you know, you start now focusing on what's going to happen next. Well, we've got to evacuate the building. We've got to tell our uh, customers. We have to stabilize the area. And then what are we concerned about? What is our plan? What's, what are we going to do about what it is that we're concerned about? And then look at that next one. What are you going to monitor? Having an intelligence network, because right now, when people are concerned, they talk. And where do people talk? They talk on social media. And there are two ways to do this. One is to listen. That's words and streams and phrases. And the other is to look, to look at a person of interest or an event or a location. We can set up a geofence around the location and monitor the social media traffic in and out. Or we can look at the event and see what's being said and what's being posted about that particular event. By the way, there's also the ability to go back in time and see what did that person say about the company a, a week ago or two weeks ago to be able to understand it or about this particular situation. In other uh, webinars, you've heard us talk about uh, behaviors of concern. And that's another reason to do the monitoring. Is there someone that has ill intent towards your organization? And you would find that information out. Now, as the crisis, we, we focused on what we know, we focused about what's going to happen, we've got a monitoring plan, we've got a plan of action that we're going to take. What are the metrics? How do you know that you've done a good job in this particular situation? So up front, what is it that we hope to be able to accomplish? And just like you talk about metrics in every other part of your business, you want to talk about metrics here. What are your three key messages? Now, this is the area that I said I'd talk about on an earlier slide. We find that these three messages work for you in every crisis. You have to adapt them to your situation. The first message is, we will not be defined by this event. This isn't what your school is about. It's not what your company is about. You're not about whatever this bad thing is that's occurred. That's not who we are. So then you talk about what, it, what you are focused on. If you have any doubt, go to your web page and look at your mission or look at what your organization uses to describe itself as a good way to get a handle on that. The second is that we're going to invent the future. If you've had an accident, we're going to become the safest uh, location. If you've had um, a problem from a violence episode, if you've had a quality issue where you're doing a product recall, whatever it is, you're going to see and set the standard. Remember that ISO standard for quality includes not only quality but risk. So we're going to be the safest in the uh, country in this area. The third is that we're not talking about what defines us. We're not talking about the future. Our focus is on the people involved. Every crisis is a human crisis. And we're doing everything we can for those that were injured, those that were hurt, those that have been financially impacted, whatever it is. So not defined by the event, invent the future, embrace the families. If you take those three core messages, you can plan and deal in any crisis environment. Now, normally, we do not recommend that you hold a press conference. If there's been an event that first responders are involved, then they would love to talk to the media. I have yet to to find a police chief or a sheriff who doesn't love the camera or a fire chief, let them hold it. They'll get out and talk about it. They're talking about the problem. The time will come for you to talk about the solution later. That's where we're talking about the next round. If you have to do a spokesperson, do not have it be your CEO or president. We don't want to put them out initially, but, and the reason for that is, remember, most of the information we had is wrong. Once they say something wrong, you're never going to be able to to walk that cat back, it's going to impact your brand and your reputation. Uh, make sure that they've been trained. And I would want you to be three deep at this position. Uh, the, that your spokesperson could be out. You'd have to have someone to come in. Normally, when we arrive at a crisis, either virtually over the phone or on site, uh, the person comes up and says, look, uh, you don't need to train me on how to handle the media. I know, but you need to train them. 
generally the person who says you don't have to train me, that's the one that you have to be trained on on how to deal in those situations. And the uh, professionally speaking program that Brenda talked about earlier would probably be a good way to start some of that training now earlier when you're not in a crisis mode. And Brenda, that was an exceptionally low price. Um, what are the threats and vulnerabilities and risk at this time? So we're not saying, hey, I'm in a tornado zone or I'm in an earthquake zone or there's a violence potential. We've had the event. The crisis has occurred. What's the next threat? Is it the threat that we are not going to be able to meet our customer orders or that we've got risk to our, the neighborhood because we've had an environmental release? release? Who are the internal and external uh, parties that are involved? What are their agendas? Should we bring in outside resources in any of these areas and engage them through our counsel in contemplation of litigation? Uh, many of the times as we're coming in, we'll do an investigation to find out what was right, what was wrong. And invariably, the company says, we didn't do anything wrong, and we find out, in fact, they did. And then talking about records retention here and what's your policy and identifying those in advance because uh, there will be litigation in these areas. So here are the questions to get you started. What are the actions? The actions follow behind those questions. You establish what happened, identify key information contacts who can give us the details of what needs to be done, uh, establish command and control. Remember at your location, if the first responders are there, they're going to assume control of your property. Establish the monitoring. Look down there at brand supporters and brand detractors. Who's saying good things about us? Who's saying bad things? Conduct your own investigation. Even though the uh, authorities will do theirs, you need to understand. Update your message maps. You may need to open a call center. Um, at Virginia Tech, we had a call center that was set up using professors and staff to be able to handle the call volume. Uh, there's an organization that Firestorm works with, uh, Black Swan, that we can help you set up so that they can have, within 45 minutes of a major event, a call center operational. Uh, and everyone that's fielding those calls coming in have a master's degree or better in the behavioral health field to be able to make sure you're communicating effectively. I also want you to identify the events that could trigger future media coverage so that we're planning on it. Rarely, if ever, will you do a press release in a press conference, particularly this early. And then what's your, mer uh, your move forward plan? If this was a satellite location, who are you going to send there? What are they going to do? Now, when we think about crisis and crisis uh, events, we think about communications. We follow the five same stages that we do in any of our plans, and that's pre-action, onset, impact assessment, response and recovery, and the post-crisis. So you'll see here that it talks about setting up uh, what your decisions are and communications in advance so that you're ready. Uh, you've heard us talk about message maps in the past and having them in place. And the reason to do that is it's easier to edit than it is to create. Imagine this terrible thing has happened. Your company has been impacted. Your people have been hurt or even killed. You're going to be involved in that. Now is not the time to sit down and try to write this copy. Having in advance makes all the difference. And then when we think about it, we deal with some communications early, some during the onset, some in the response, and some after the event. Now as we think about these five stages, we break the communications down into three buckets. First is the coordination communication. That's the type of thing that we're doing as soon as the event happened. Do we need to shelter in place? Do we need to evacuate? Do we need to do lockdown or lockout? What do you need people to do? That's a coordination. And generally, the coordination communications is primarily internal. Uh, that's where software, like the uh, notification systems, uh, MIR-3 is one that comes to mind. And that system allows you to have identified who you communicate and how you communicate with them in that process. The second is crisis. The crisis communication tends to both be both internal and external, and it's really where we're talking about impacts to our brand and reputation. So the first communication is coordination. Then our communications are going to be shifting over and dealing with the crisis itself. The last area of communication is that of compliance. Now, some of our uh, crises require more from a communication standpoint. For example, a cyber breach if someone's uh, personally identifiable information or their 
personal health information is breached, then you've got compliance notifications there. But if you are looking at a, a school who's done an evacuation, you're going to have to have a coordination communications uh, associated with it. If you had a situation that created a potential risk to children, you have a compliance notification that you'd have to notify the authorities there because you're a, a, a reporting party associated with it. So we have the five stages and then the three C's of crisis communications. So if you're writing a crisis communications plan, you go back to the firestorm predict, plan, perform. Let's slow it down and talk about that specifically. The first is who is your audience? If you're going to communicate, who is it that you're trying to talk to? Is it your employees? Is it your customers? Your vendors? Is it the regulators? What are your concerns? And here is a key point, and we'll hit it as in the medium in a second. If you communicate to any of your target groups through the media, you're doing the wrong thing. You're then using the tool for the right solution. You're saying, well, we've got to get the word out. You already know how to speak to your employees. You know how to reach them. You know how to reach your customers. You know how to communicate with your investors or your regulators. You do not need to communicate through a third party here. So look at your audience and figure out what their concerns are. If it's the families of your employees, they're going to want to know that they're safe. That's going to be their primary concern. The second, then, is tailoring the message, the messenger, and the media, and that's actually medium. How are we going to do it? Is it a text message? You remember years ago when the plane went down in the far uh, east and they sent a text message to people telling them that their loved ones were dead. Not the correct medium to send that message. And you've got to format it to each stakeholder group. So as we think through these things, first we look at the audience, their concerns, focus on our message. It's easier to edit than to create, have the message maps. Then who's going to deliver it? And then what is the tool they're going to use to do that? And it's going to be different. What we say to employees will be on the same subject of what we say to customers, but at different levels. Remember, you'll have confidentiality issues around all of these events. And lastly, focus on those three key messages. That's the perform. You're always going to come back to them. That's where your basis will be in looking at it. Now, uh, I stained my deck over the last couple of weekends. And it's a large deck, and it was a much bigger project than I thought it was going to be to get in. And uh, when you stain, you put it on. You can roll it on. You can spray it on. Uh, you can brush it on depending upon the part. But, you know, if that stain gets on your clothing, it's there. And it's hard to get that stain out. It may never go out. A crisis stains. And when it stains, it, that's going to be the lasting impression that's there within it. That's why we're talking about what your next crisis will be and how you pull this together. So when you think about this, I want you to slow it down. Stabilize it, trigger those responses, opine on what the problems are, and then prevent you from making those common mistakes. So what do you have and what do you need? These two columns on the left and right are the things I want you to put in place right now. If you're going to find yourself at some time in a crisis, we were, I'm in Dallas in a series of meetings and we're talking about different organizations and industry segments and associations with thousands of members. And so the question comes up, what's the probability if you're a business association, that one of your members could have a crisis this month? And the answer is probably 100% with thousands. And if you start looking at that, so you've got to have to then, in a crisis, there's an initial event analysis. You have to be able to do that. That's one of the things that you're going to need in any crisis. We gave you some of the questions up front and the strategies. You want to establish this baseline of the media. That's where the intelligence monitoring comes in. Coordinating your communications. You don't want one group of people saying one thing and another. Develop the messages. Media training for the people that are involved. Now is the time to do the media training. So, Brenda, I uh, saw that thing on Professionally Speaking. That's a great opportunity at a low price to start getting the type of training that you need. Have the intelligent solutions in advance. And remember, it's more than a Google search. And in today's world, we can monitor things that you couldn't years ago and it becomes extremely effective. 
Fourth, conduct this risk, vulnerability, and threat assessment of what's going to happen next. What is going to be, what are we concerned about to understand those elements? Have a strategy. Okay, this is how we're going to handle this crisis. Engage in brand and business recovery. How do we recover our brand? How, how do we protect it at each step? How do we customer orders flowing again? Because if we don't have revenue, we're not going to have the ability to stay in business. We've got to maintain confidence of our employees and our customers. Uh, and if we don't do that, we are not going to be able to survive this crisis. The events that occurred in, in Orlando through the various events that were there could have been a crisis in confidence uh, for those that were thinking about them. Facilitate relations with the government entities or regulators. Minimize your legal risk. Look in making sure where you are from compliance and what your reporting duties are. What are your other partnerships? Are there advocates that can talk for you and support you? And you need to have support 24 by 7 because this thing is not going to go away until it's over and that's going to stay for a while. And then finally, the last one that many people forget, how do we stand down? We're not going to stand at battle stations for weeks or months. We're going to get in, deal with this, and disengage from this crisis and move back on to the rest of your business. That picture in the center of can you identify your organization's next crisis and we say we can, how you respond to this one will make that determination. You've seen this in many of our webinars as we've talked about uh, how you measure uh, performance in uh, crisis management. And the, look at the left-hand column. Decision process, roles and responsibilities, information clarity, speed of decision making, communications effectiveness. Those are going to be the things that determine how you perform. And you see you move across that from a stage one all the way up to a stage four. Many of you will find that you're in that liability stage where everything comes as a surprise. Maybe you're up at a point where you're just reacting. But you, your goal here is to become a three or a four within that cycle to be able to handle it. So as you look at that, plan for each one of those four uh, stages. Look and see which descriptions fit you the best to be able to find your way through. So how do you deal with this? Well, right now, predict, plan, perform. What are the vulnerabilities and threats that your organization faces? What do you monitor? What are the triggers? What are the impacts? What are the messages under the plan that you're going to say? What are the decisions you're going to measure? And then finally, training and testing your plans. Those should be your next steps associated with it. Here are some next steps that I can think of. One, establish an intelligence network. How do we monitor what's being said about us in peace so that when it's said about us in war, we know? Two, develop a crisis communications plan with message maps. Three, conduct a communications audit. If you haven't looked at this, we would be glad to work with you to do an audit of where you are. What defines your company? What are the words that people associate with it? What's your reputation? Uh, there's going to be a, at the, if you're going to the DRJ conference in September in Phoenix, we're going to do a crisis communications workshop the day before on Saturday and Sunday morning. That's going to be a great chance. You would come out of there with communications guidelines, message maps, and an opportunity. I'd also tell you that on August the 19th, and I'll bring it up again on a slide in a minute, you've got the opportunity at the University of Alabama uh, to learn specifically. Now we are going to do another exercise. We just did this month the communicable illness and Zika, and if you want to talk about uh, redoing that with your team, let us know. Uh, but in August, we're going to do a crisis that will impact your business, whether you're a school, an organization, or a company. The difference in this exercise versus the others, in December we told you we were doing a cyber breach, and in February we said we were doing active shooter, uh, and we then did sexting and cyberbullying for schools, and now we've done communicable illness. We're not telling you what this exercise is. This will be a great test for your crisis management team and your crisis communications in August because we're going to put you through a crisis and we're not telling you in advance. You'll have to discover it as the crisis moves along and then make the decisions. And then we've set up a uh, behavioral, uh, behaviors of concern user group and we'll be talking about that. There's a program we're running at, uh, out with the University of Alabama 
for all the schools in the state of Alabama to provide a behavioral risk threat assessment program and that will be an opportunity to participate in and we do that both in schools and in businesses. There is a brief on today's webinar. You can go to firestorm.com and download it. It will give you uh, some of the information that we've talked about here that you'll have those elements and do it. We'll also send you an email with a link uh, to that particular site. Uh, so Brenda, we've talked about a lot of things. What comes to your mind as we focus on that today? Is there anything else you want to say about the conference you've got coming up on August the 19th? Well, Jim, thank you so much. And I think the information showing on the screen there, the individuals can register uh, either through the web or they can use the telephone, 348-3000. Our registration line is always open for individuals to be able to register. Uh, Jim, I always learn something new every time we do one of these. I'm just amazed at the wealth of information and, and background that you have in, in these important topics, especially in the world we live in today. So I think you've gotten into my head because when I heard about the Orlando shooting, I was thinking uh, something's going to change and I hope people have their plans together and I hope that you know they're prepared. So uh, it's just something that we can't afford not to have in place. And uh, we're just really here to help, and we think this professionally speaking workshop, although you know the main topic is professionally speaking, professionally speaking is never more important than when you're in a crisis. So we really uh, hope this opportunity will be valuable to individuals out there, and thank everyone uh, who was on the, the webinar today. And Jim, you're always a good friend. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I've enjoyed knowing Brenda for the last several years and, and the value that the University of Alabama brings and particularly that new program that we're doing with all the schools there I think you're going to find very interesting. So if you want to uh, view this webinar again or share it with others within your organization, you can go to firestorm.com. It and the previous in the series are recorded there. If you've got particular questions, you can contact us at webinars at firestorm.com. Or if you find yourself in a crisis and need immediate assistance, you can call 800-321-2219. Communications is always tough. Uh, I know a lot of people that have difficulty standing in front of a group and talking, and the professionally speaking thing that Brenda talked about in that training opportunity is excellent. But trying to figure this out in the middle of a crisis when it's your people, your company, your organization, your brand, and your reputation is a tremendous difficulty. I would tell you, laying this out in advance, the probability of success is greatly enhanced. We've seen situations where results improved after the crisis because of the way that it was handled, the message that was delivered that you were a company or an organization of integrity, that you cared about your people, that you had a plan, that you responded appropriately. Being able to put those things out makes a big difference. We hope you never have to use any of the things we talk about. Unfortunately, you do. Unfortunately, those events will ha happen. And we wish you all the support that you need. If you need our help, we're here. We're going to continue the series next month with a, another discussion. And we'll go a, a little bit more next month into communicable illness. And we're monitoring closely with Zika. That's an illness that is focused primarily on the word fear. And when you think about the impacts that it could have on um, children being born with birth defects, if you think about the impact of GPS where the immune system could be impacted, we'll talk more about that next month and give you some specific things to look for. But it's a chance to pull out that pandemic plan, make sure that it's current and ready. Uh, to be operated on at that point. There's a lot to say. Make sure you have a plan. Focus on it. And remember, in that crisis, stop. Stabilize the situation. Trigger your resources. Opine on the consequences and prevent these mistakes from being made. Thanks, everyone. Until next month, it's Jim Saturday. Goodbye. <laughs>